Right then, welcome to this new video, and this is revisiting um, a topic that I did uh, a few years ago. It's my first video, I think, that's got a hell of a lot of views. It's been on there a while, that's probably why, but it's to do with the Poisson distribution model um, and how you can use it to predict outcomes in football matches. So I did this, as I said, a few years ago, and it proved popular, and I wanted to revamp it. Um, I was just curious, to be honest. Um, when I saw that so many people were interested in it, I thought, you know what, why don't we have another look at this um, for my own sort of uh, curiosity, and I'll, I'll film it as well to show you what's going on. So I started to do it for the Premier League and realised there's no fixtures this weekend, so I've done it for the Premier League, so I'll put that up at another point. But um, So I did the Championship. Um, and I just wanted to talk you through it really and give you a look and I've done it in time I mean I don't, don't know if the video will process in time but uh, before the 3 o'clock kickoffs today which is the what's the day the 29th of January so you can just sort of um, see how it goes in real time if you like um, I'm not putting these as predictions I'm not trying to bet on this I'm not saying it works I'm just showing you the model uh, and how you can use it yourself um, there are limitations to it massively. It underestimates the draw in a lot of instances, and there is a Poisson distribution model that you can get that readdresses the sort of imbalance for the draw. But that's not this. Um, from what I can see so far, it looks pretty accurate. It look, it, it predicts what you'd sort of expect from if you've got any knowledge of football um, and the championship. When you look at what it predicts, and then you yourself look at the teams and the form, you think, you know what? Yeah, uh, there's nothing outlandish there. So let's have a look. I'll tell you how I did it. So there's a lot of there's a lot of um, data involved in it. Um, it's harder work than I remembered, to be honest. I started doing it and thought oh, I kind of really be asked to finish it, but I thought I'll crack on and eventually got there, even though my eyes are bleeding. So what we need to do first is to get all of the results of the matches so far in the championship this year. I'm, I'm working on this season, so every result of every game by every team. And you can scrape these from you know various websites. Uh, you can just pick them up and copy and paste them, which is what I did. But then when you copy and paste them, obviously you've got the result 2-2, two, 2-1, two, two, one, one, one. But what we really need to do to make the calculations later easier, we need to have the home and away goals in two different columns. So I started off with these three columns and I had to go through and put the away and home goals based on that, which is a bit of a pain in the neck and took a while. Um, so we've got that, fine. So now we move on to the data. So what we now need to do is calculate the home and away attacking strengths for the two teams, which makes up the the bulk of the, the Poisson distribution model. Uh, and to do that, we need to find these stats. So how many games have been played, uh, how many goals scored, the average goals scored, how many goals have been conceded, and the average goals conceded per match, that, those averages, for each team. And we've got to do this at home and away. So here we've got, if you look at Barnsley, we've got, they've played, oh, so I went through this, filtered it by column A, only showed Barnsley, so that only showed Barnsley's home games, and then used these columns to sum the amount of goals they'd scored and the amount of goals they'd conceded at home, and then did it for the away, and you know, so on and so on, did it for every single team, so you have to do it for every single team twice, home and away, and what this comes out with are all these figures. So you can see that Barnsley have played 12 games at home, They've scored eight on average per game. They scored 0.67 goals. They've conceded 15 at home. That's on average they concede 1.25 goals at home. Away, Barnes have played 14, scored nine. They average 0.64 goals. Scored away and they've conceded 26, which is an average of 1.86 goals conceded away from home. And we've done this for every single team in the championship. As I say, it took a while. At the bottom here, we've got the averages for games played, which is kind of irrelevant. So the average goals for, and yeah, and average goals against. So this is gonna be a key figure, average goals for, um, and also average goals against. These are the key figures that we need for the Poisson distribution model uh, in the final instance. So what we can then do once we've got this is calculate the attacking strength, defensive strength, of each team for home and away. So for the attacking strength, I can show you the, oh, I didn't want to do that. I can show you the formula. So it's, the attacking strength is D4 divided by 1.37. So if we're looking at Barnsley, D4, how many goals on average they score at home divided by 
the average goal scored at home throughout the whole league. So that's D4, Barnsley's average goals four, divided by the average overall for the championship, gives us 0.49. And we do that for every team, so we can just drag that formula down. Don't. It's important not to... Well, there's ways of doing it, aren't there? I initially, I remember last time I did it, um, did D4 and then, what's this, D29, but then... It, if you drag it down, it will do D30, D31. So you just have to put 1.37 in to make it static. So that gives us the attacking strength at home. The defensive strength, same story. So we can show you that. Defensive strength, F4 divided by 1.13. So Barnes is average goals against divided by the average goals against for the whole league. And it's the same story for away. So we get the away stats as well. So the away stats, obviously, K4... 0.64 divided by 1.13 and then it will be 1.86 divided by 1.38 um, and this gives us the attacking strength and the defensive strength both at home and away for every team in the championship and this is the important data that we need we then go on to look at the actual model itself so I've got a very sort of layman's <laughs> brief example here a worked example um, so if we look at the home goal expectancy because that's what we need next we've got the attacking strength and the defensive strength and now we need the goal expectancy which is we're going to put into the Poisson distribution model and give us our predicted results so home goal expectancy so we're looking at I looked at Huddersfield Stoke which was last night so I started this model last night Huddersfield Stoke were playing last night so this we know the result of this game already um, but I did actually do it before so home goal expectancy is home attacking strength uh, times away defensive strength times average goals at home and the away team's goal expectancy is they have away attacking strength times the home defensive strength times the average goals away so and then this is the actual Poisson distribution model for you mathematical people out there um, I'm not really one of them as much as it might sound I call myself the math bet man um, but I'm not really I'm not that deep I like to use models but I don't necessarily like to work through you know, from the nth degree, lots of some help with them. But this is the uh, Poisson distribution model where x equals the number of goals. So we use a we use a program to punch the figures in in a minute um, to give us the the outcomes below. I don't actually do them by hand. Um, so if we look at Huddersfield v Stoke, then so we're looking at away attacking strength times home defensive strength times average goals away. So if we go back to this table, Huddersfield's home uh, attacking strength is hopefully it's 1.07 yep it is <laughs> um, and then we're multiplying that by the away defensive strength which for Stoke is hopefully 0.72 it is and then we times it by the average number of goals scored at home which is 1.37 and that gives us 1.05 and we're doing the same conversely for Stoke using the away team goal expectancy and what that's given us is 1.05 versus 1.01. Now, that don't be mistaken thinking they're goals. They're not goals. They are the goal expectancies. Uh, it's a different It's a different figure. It might sound like it's expected goals. It's not the same as expected goals. So you punch this into the Poisson distribution model, and there's a Poisson distribution calculator that you can get online that you can use for this. Um, and what that will then do is give you the odds, the you know the fair odds, if you like, according to the distribution model and also the percentage chance of each scoreline. Now, I've only gone up to 4-4 four, four here. You can go up to 6-6, six, 7-7, six, seven, seven, whatever you want, but I could not see Huddersfield Stoke being above 4-4, four, four. and as you can see, 4-4 four, four is 0.03% chance. There's not much point looking for anything above that. So, for that Huddersfield Stoke game, it's given us odds of 2.79 on a home win, 2.96 on an away win, and 3.30 on a draw. It does underestimate the draw normally. So as you can see, that's a good draw, um, a good draw estimate, I'd say. Um, 3.30, that's a commonly what I bet on on a draw. And you can see how close the home and away win odds are. Uh, so obviously that looks like a decent shout for the draw to me. So I've highlighted that. Uh, and then it's got the bet, I actually for this one, put the bet fair odds on to see the comparison. So they're saying 2.79, it should be. So you're getting less than that for the home win. Away win, 2.96. You're getting good odds on Betfair for the away win. And for the draw, 3.30, 3.36. So you're getting good odds for the draw slightly as well. So 
I mean, this screams out draw, doesn't it, really? And then if you look at the actual breakdown of the score lines, I've highlighted the ones in bold that um, come up with the highest percentage. So the highest percentage here is 1-1. One, one. Uh, the second is 1-0 to the home team, so 1-0 to Huddersfield. And then the third highest percentage is 1-0 to Stoke, so that's just showing you how really close it's predicted to be. And this game, lo and behold, actually ended 1-1. One, one. So it was absolutely bang on. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying all, go all games will be, and it's <laughs> this is probably the best example I've ever found of it, and it just so happens to be the first one. So the game ended 1-1, one, one, so the actual scoreline came in, and the draw came in. Um, so it shows you, I mean, I'm not saying it works all the time, but it shows you that there's got to be some sort of correlation. It's got to have some merit to it. I wouldn't suggest going and placing bets on it um, blindly, but it can be something that you have in your arsenal to sort of use along the way um, to just give you a sort of almost like a comfort blanket of saying, OK, that I had a feeling that this would be the case. And actually the stats suggest that it's not far away and it can just aid you, you know, your, um, your betting a little bit. Uh, so I think... I think that's. I think it's interesting to tell the truth. I think it's still valid. Um, I think you shouldn't use it completely on its own, blindly follow it. Um, but I think it's it's something to have in your arsenal, like I say. Um, so yeah, I think I'll in the next video I'll briefly show you the predictions for today, the 29th. So I've got them here, but we'll go through those in the next video because I don't want this one to be too long. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks a lot.